Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Go back to the market here, marker here. And the first support level on this, as it came into the Fibonacci level, this is where you can see that these serve as zones. And originally, I re really didn't look at these closer support levels and give them too much credit because we had this larger flag formation that had formed on a larger time frame, which would mean that the closer levels of support have a more decent chance of breaking as long as the overall momentum of the reversal or of the breakdown is at least as strong as that previous upside move, if not stronger. And in this case, it starts out where the momentum is about the same, where here's the last part of the upside, and here's the last part of the downside. And so you can see you have a similar momentum move here, but it began to shift with this avalanche formation, which uh, some of you could also call another larger head and shoulders pattern here. And this led to an increase in the momentum. So you can see that it really, even though it stalled at that um, 61.8% Fibonacci level, it only did so for just a couple of days before it was able to break through it again because of the momentum shift, where now, because this breakdown into C is stronger than the move off of the highs into B, you get a larger than equal move compared to the move off of the highs and into the lows of B. That's your first drop off of the low, or off of the high, rather. Let me clear this up a little bit here. So we have a first drop here, and then here's the continuation. And you can see we now have a larger than average move. This also helps give you a heads up that as it goes and attempts a third move to complete the trend, that you also have a very good chance that the momentum is going to increase on that third move as well since you had a stronger move on the second one than you had on the first. As a result, as this broke lower, even though it held that 100% retracement level for a day, it was still able to break through it rather quickly, and it pushed to a low just recently at the 138.2% Fibonacci retracement level. William has a question. Do these numbers become more reliable as you go to longer time frames? The larger the time frame, then yes, the better the chances are that it's going to hold then on the smaller time frames, at least be a more substantial hold. So smaller time frames tend to hold for a smaller amount of time. But the difference is, is that when you're going to the larger time frames, the more room you have to give at the zones of support or resistance, meaning that, for instance, where a support or resistance zone might even be a, a couple of pips if you're trading on tick charts or such intraday, if you drop back and you're trading on a daily or a weekly time frame, you have to give it a lot more room. Usually what I like to do is if you see all of like these average bars where in the, when it's trading in some sort of trading range and you see those type of bars, I consider the support or resistance zone to be about that much. So whatever time frame I'm trading on, I kind of take that as a rule of thumb. Uh, so for instance, it just happens to be that on this USDJPY pair, it's about as fat as my marker is. So if I clear this, for instance, 
you can see that if I draw my marker here, right in the middle of that 138.2% retracement level, that it just came in, tapped that support zone, and then bounced sharply off of it. What I want to show you on the next slide is this is the ETF that I traded for this instead. As I said, I was trading more longer term in my IRA account, so I actually took this position in the FXY. In the FXY, it ends up being a buy setup. We had three ways of decline. And this triggered an initial setup right here at the end of August when this pullback into that third low actually broke higher. So you can see it triggered initially with this gap higher actually and then kind of fell into a little bit of congestion. That's a 20 period simple moving average there on the chart. And it congested along that for a couple of days before it broke higher. I didn't see this position, however, until it was right about in here. So it's already sort of gaining momentum. So as a result, I built my position within this congestion zone right here. When you have this momentum reversal pattern, this is actually one of my favorite patterns to trade, particularly on the currencies and the futures markets, because I find that, for instance, if you're trading e-mini futures in today, you will find several examples of these every single day on a uh, two to a five minute chart in today on any given um, e-mini, such as the ES, or the YM, or the NQ. And it has a very high probability of success. The initial resistance target on this setup is if you look at this previous high here, there's a congestion zone. Well, that tends to be where it will stall originally. So you can see that that's what held as the high in October here. And as it comes into that, you then need to back up and look at the larger time frames to see how much more room does it really have. Well, on this, this is another example of where you can apply these Fibonacci levels. So you would start your Fibonacci line up here at the high, and then you'd be looking at a retracement from this level here at 103.52-ish down to 90.10. And that gives you these projections here. What you can see is that the FXY actually held that larger 138.2 retracement better than the currency pair did. It hit it more precisely at D on this chart. So this gave you the two different types of entries that you could have had. For instance, the ideal one was this channel break here. And the second one is this high here. There was this two-wave pullback, though, within it. So as I said, I actually built my position within that congestion as opposed to waiting for it to trigger the breakout because I was looking at it as a little bit of a, a second chance to get into it since I missed that first level. What you can see here is that in this case, the Fibonacci levels on the closer levels don't really hold quite as well. I mean, you're getting like some, some brief stalls at them that are stripping as some support or resistance. For instance, 95.22 was that 38.2% retracement level. And you can see that it stalled and formed that congestion right under that level. Let me clear that up here. So it served as resistance originally heading into October. The next level, the 50%, held as support. And it actually gapped up into that zone, where it then congested along this 61.8% uh, or 62% level. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.